Peace, peace and love everyone, it's your man Manny Faces Back with another episode of Hip Hop Innovates with Manny Faces uh, This is my third episode, doing this uh, every weekday If all goes according to plan So three in a row, third time's a charm uh, Three things becomes a trend, as they say in journalism So maybe I'm trend, maybe I'm onto something here uh, I appreciate your eyes and your ears and your time Checking out what I'm trying to do I want to bring to you guys every day quick news tidbits Little items of uh, information that I come across or know about Or can pass along to you about hip-hop pop music and culture outside of kind of what's on the radio and and what you normally hear through the corporate media channels that that uh that you know kind of you know ha- have all the the volume but not necessarily all of the substance right uh so i'm not the type to go back and talk about necessarily what's wrong with today's hip-hop music and culture although there'll be some of that i'm sure uh but other people do that as well uh, i'm just trying to point out some of the things that i've come across in my work with the center for hip-hop advocacy over here Start as a nonprofit that's out here to try to increase public awareness and understanding of hip hop, music, and culture. And a lot of that is going outside of hip hop circle and try to show people what we're really all about. And part of what we're about is music and you know the stuff you see in the videos and on the radio and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a lot more. Hip hop's being used in so many different ways. First of all, there's more artists than that and more styles of music than what's making the mainstream playlists. Uh, second of all, of course, there's hip hop being used in different areas of society and to great benefit to a lot of people. Uh, including hip hop and education and health and wellness. And we talk about science and technology and politics and activism. So all these different areas where hip hop music and culture and participants and sensibilities can be found doing really beneficial things. And I don't think that narrative gets out enough. So I'm doing that myself. Part of how I do this, and I'll explain later, is an email newsletter that we send out about every week or so where uh, I hand curate a bunch of articles and tidbits from around the web and around the world and deliver them to your inbox. So here you get, you know, 30 uh, stories that you may not have heard about because hip hop media tends to not cover these things. And sometimes mainstream media really gets it wrong when it comes to hip-hop so i deliver these to you so that you can you know increase your awareness and understanding and confidence uh, that hip-hop music and culture still can benefit lives and livelihoods and communities throughout the country and the world so uh sometimes i'm bringing you news tidbits that i want you to pay attention to and sometimes i'm gonna have uh an opinion or two uh to speak uh about and that's what i have today uh, an opinion because I came across a story uh, that uh, was on the Daily Mail, which is a UK tabloid. Uh, the title of the article is Barack Obama slams hip hop and rap music for promoting toxic masculinity. And I, I just caught my eye. Bar- Barack Obama, President uh, Obama spoke at the My Brother's Keeper uh, Summit and part of his organization that he's put out there. Um, and he's uh, he spoke about at that summit and he made some comments about hip pop music uh, that were taken by the Daily Mail, which is a sensationalist kind of place. And they're going to obviously take the most provocative things that someone says in, in an hour and a half long summit. Uh, these were only a few lines, uh, but it caught my eye, caught my ear and my attention. I, I went back and watched the whole video to see where this came from in greater context. And I'm still a little disappointed uh, in, in President Obama. So President Obama, obviously, when you listen to this, here's what I mean. Uh, he made a couple of comments, and the question that that preluded this was uh, a young man asking about how uh, to change the narrative, so to speak, about how young boys, particularly you know, young men of color, are sort of told to what what it is to be a man and sometimes those things that uh, are told to them or the imagery or the you know because atmosphere is you know things that you would then see later translated into rap music which is kind of where the answer went uh you know this this uh idea that you have to have all this gold on and you know, to, to promote your wealth and that uh, as you can see the quote here if you're very confident about your sexuality says president obama you don't have to have eight women around you twerking this got a lot of laughs and a lot of people kind of you know doing this you know like mm, you know but it doesn't really get to the root of of where the problem is the entire summit gets to the root of where these societal problems lie that then find themselves being expressed through rap music, be it violence or drug use or, again, uh, over-sexualization of women, misogyny. These things do exist in hip-hop. So I don't want to sugarcoat that and I don't want to try to dismiss that. But what I find very often, and I think President Obama fell into this trap, we've seen it with a lot of people that have big platforms and have something to say about hip-hop, uh, and then those comments get taken and amplified. The problem is, is that your comments are going to get taken and amplified. And what you're doing here is you're singling out hip hop 
and rap music as being toxic. Although I don't know if he used the words toxic masculinity, the news, the news publication kind of ran with that, but that was the gist of this. In other words, saying, here are some really negative things that you see in, in rap, for example, rap and hip hop, and why we shouldn't have to, as young men, young boys, uh, men of color, have to do these things to be seen as impressive or seen as a man. Ironically, one of the things that he said in that same kind of segment was that what we should be doing is uplifting uh, the successful men in life who didn't feel the need to resort to those things. And that's kind of the gist of what I have a complaint about, because this happens way too much with hip hop music and culture. It's easy to criticize, and this criticism is necessary, and it's, and it's, but it's, it's a little over-litigated at this point because we know that these things exist, but we also know, those of us who know, uh, that hip-hop is much more than that, and that rap music is much more than that, and that, in fact, rap music and hip-hop culture is being used in areas that actually combat these things. They combat all the societal issues that cause these issues in the first place, and then they offer an alternative and they offer other ways of being of expressing yourself and being artistic uh, to, to not have to fall into these narrowly laid paths, na- laid often by corporate media and corporate interests that throw a lot of money at a very negative perception to, you know, obviously, um, I don't say obviously, to perhaps capitalize off of these this imagery because it makes them money. There's a lot of reasons why you see what you see in rap and hip hop, and it can't be just uh, whittled down to, well, this is toxic masculinity at work. I think there's a mistake in that. We often find uh, that people will negatively criticize hip hop without at the same time, that's important, at the same time, bigging up all the things in hip hop that exist to benefit and uplift lives. Again, being used in school to raise grades and, and engagement, uh, being used in mental health therapy to, uh, to help to, and save lives. It's, it's, it's a factual thing. It's, be, it's being done and it's being done well. Uh, to introduce children and young people, students, to areas and, and, and facets of, of industry that they may not have had access to, coding, programming, hacking. We see it, the hip hop architecture camp uh, does a great job of this. So all of these things happen in hip hop, but what happens is if you're not mentioning them at the exact same time as you're, that you're criticizing hip hop, those incendiary comments that you make towards hip hop, because hip hop is so ubiquitous, it's so much a part of, of everyday life, not just black and brown, but I mean, it's, it's a part of Americana. Right. So you're going to get those things extracted. We've seen it happen when Questlove calls out the need for more protest music in hip hop on his Instagram a couple years ago. There's plenty of protest music in hip hop, but you're adding to the perception that there isn't. Now, we know that it's not on a certain level, but it'll never get to a certain level. And in fact, it's a slap in the face, I think, to all the individuals and organizations that are doing that kind of work to be spoken about as if they're not there. So President Obama, with the largest platform, you know, one of the largest platforms in the world, says these things. You see it ripped apart by this particular publication, which talks about it, uh, you know, the, the need for, uh, let's face it, a lot of hip hop and rap music is built around me showing how I got more money than you. I can disrespect you, he said. Now, some rap and hip hop is built around those things. There's no question, but a lot isn't. And we need more people to be speaking at this level about the individuals, organizations, artists that are not doing that to do exactly what he said a little bit earlier in the, in the, in the, inter, in, in the, you know, in the Q and a where he says, we have to uplift people who are being successful without having to do some of these negative things. And that exists in hip hop. But if you're not talking about it, then, you know, maybe you're part of the problem. I looked at the whole video. It's actually really interesting. My Brother's Keeper Summit, I, I recommend anybody to, to check it out, uh, particularly, uh, you know, young men of color who this is aimed at um, to, to sh- demonstrate a whole bunch of positivity and, and ways of looking at the world and, and work that's being done to improve all of these issues that disproportionately, these injustices, that disproportionately uh, attack young men of color in this country. So I do appreciate the entire thing i don't know that the section on music which starts uh, i'll link to the time uh which starts with music 
and goes into this idea of hip hop being a uh, very little more than a, a, a conduit or a representation of negative imagery. I don't think that's helpful. And I think that really defeats some of the purpose uh, and, and, and it hurts the cause of the people who are actually doing work with hip hop in positive ways. So to President Obama, to Questlove, to anyone else that has a large platform and, and wants to criticize, because we do understand that the direction that the music and the culture associated with it has taken in, in, in recent years uh, may be problematic. There's certainly a lot to deal with. Uh, but it is very important uh, that if you're going to speak about that at the same time, so that there's no chance that your your words can get uh, taken out of context at the same time, offer those caveats, offer those disclaimers and say that, yes, while hip hop has these issues, here's also a lot of great examples of of uh, of uh, where hip hop doesn't and where hip hop does great things. Now, I deliver this to people to make that easy to compile this kind of information in, like I say, a newsletter. I'd love for you to sign up. First of all, tell me what you think about my opinion, about what their opinion was, about what President Obama said, and about the need for us to present hip hop in a better light whenever we get the chance. Uh, so if we're going to criticize it, that's fine. Plenty has been done to criticize. It's time for solutions and to uplift those who are doing right by hip hop much more than regurgitating the same criticisms over and over again. I think that that is not uh, conducive to forwarding the culture, as it were. So, again, every week or two, I put out this uh, newsletter. I curate these stories, and many of them are stories of hip-hop being used in positive ways to uplift and to benefit lives and livelihoods and communities. Uh, it's called The Hip-Hop Advocate. You can sign up for it there. I won't uh, give away your email address. It's just for this e for this list. Uh, we've had about 40 editions so far. There's 800-something people on the list so far. People enjoy it. They seem to uh, get a lot of value out of it, so I urge you to sign up for that at hiphopadvocacy.org. And uh, like I said, once again, every, uh, every week or two, to this goes out uh so we'll be sending that out i'll probably link to this as well i want to talk about oh i'm gonna i don't have this i i do have this do i have it ah, i lost it uh there is a um ah, there's an upcoming uh conference that i wanted to point out Give me one second. Uh, there's one. There's an upcoming conference coming out uh, at Harvard University. Again, again, let's talk about how hip hop is being used in great ways and great places. And this uh, conference is coming up. It's called the Can't Stop Hip Hop: The Education Movement. It's happening at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Shouts to the Hip Hop EX Lab up there that does a weekly get together and talks about hip hop being used in really inventive and innovative ways. Uh, shouts to Aisha Church up there, the professor. Uh, they're having a, an event. Um, I think that. If if you want to sign up to present to perform, uh, you still have a day to do that. I'm going to link to it. It's on Facebook events. They think they have a, an off Facebook page as well. It's the third annual hip hop ed conference at the hip hop EX lab at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. I'm going to be there and I'll tell you more about how and why later. Uh, but I do want you to check that out and show love. And it's just one example of conferences that are coming up uh, that look at hip hop in all these ways that I wish, you know, President Obama knew about and could speak about when he's given the opportunity. Opportunity. Uh, so we'll talk, President uh, Obama. Let's, you know, maybe we can get, you know, we can work something out. Uh, in the meantime, in between time, I do also, it's funny, introducing this podcast is President Obama talking about hip hop in a much more uh, enlightened way. Uh, the podcast is Hip Hop Can Save America. And uh, I, uh, the season one is done. It's about 11 episodes. And we talk with innovators in hip hop. Again, mental health therapy, Dr. Ian Levy, Dr. Bettina Love with the hip hop ed and civics education, which she's important. Dr. Gloria Latson Billings, uh, an OG in the hip hop pedagogy movement. So Again, a lot of people, Baba Brinkman doing hip hop theater long before Hamilton. So there's a lot of people out there doing these things. And I, I talk about them. I talk to them in Hip Hop Can Save America, the podcast. You can find that at Hip Hop Can Save America or at hiphopadvocacy.org. It's all under the same umbrella. Uh, so those things are happening. Uh, I'm running through this. Uh, again, give me your opinion. I, I think it's very easy to get into the to fall into the trap of talking critiquing hip-hop without at the same time bigging it up that's all i want i just want it to happen at the same time if anything my job i'll talk about it positively all day and i probably won't talk about the negative stuff too much uh because i just want to spend all my time uplifting the positive stuff hence the newsletter hence the podcast but if we are going to talk about it and if we are people like president obama with a giant platform please please for all the people who are doing the good work attached to hip-hop 
Let's work on not tarnish, continuing to tarnish the name hip hop culture. And let's start uplifting, as you say, President Obama, uplifting those associated with it. It would do everyone a great service. My artist of the day. The reminders. Uh, I talk to uh, uh, a lot of people about artists that I, I come across and really admire. The reminders are out of Colorado, although he's, he's from New York, uh, New York, Brooklyn, uh, Queens, uh, somewhere in New York. Um, Big Samir. Uh, they are a great. They're a husband and wife team. Uh, they are very musical, very creative trilingual i think uh really conscious about the the material they put out very uh, heartfelt very socially uh, aware very social justice oriented i love them they perform a lot i saw them like years ago and i've never stopped listening to them it took one show just seeing them rock one time and i'm always putting them at the top of the list of people that i talk about and share so i figured as i'm doing my artist of the day thing i'd mention them as well go to the remindersmusic.com and check out what they are bringing to the world i love it i hope that you will too who do you think i should feature as an artist of the day artists that are doing something about above and beyond more than just mere entertainment you know it could be social activism it could be just you know making really creative music it could be uh you know doing community work as well uh, i definitely want to highlight those and again uplift those people who are doing these things uh, on uh go to social media hashtag hip hop innovates and let me know uh who you think i should i have a whole bunch lined up i know a bunch i want to talk to but i'm always down to learn we should all learn more i don't know everybody right who's doing great stuff so leave it up to you guys to tell me hip hop innovates is the hashtag my name is manny faces uh i'm I appreciate your ears and your eyes and your time i try to come to you every weekday god willing and bring you these hip hop innovates video vignettes as they were um you can find me at mannyfaces.com uh you can find us at hiphopadvocacy.com uh, we have speakers that are available. We have all kind of things that we can put together to help people understand the full story about hip-hop music and culture. Peace. I'll see y'all tomorrow.